Hi guys, I uh, hope this video finds you all well and I hope you're not too terribly bored at home. We're getting feedback that you guys are um, actually enjoying seeing some of your teacher's faces and you miss school a little bit. Um, and just know that we miss you too. Um, and all we can do is just make the best of this. So let's rock on, right? Um, I do want to say I'm really impressed with your responses to assignment number one. A lot of you are putting so much effort in and it's going to pay off, I promise. So good job. Keep up the good work. Um, I want to introduce you to in, um, assignment number two with this little brief video where I think it's going to be important to break down a little bit of detail regarding coal formation and petroleum formation. I think what makes this topic sometimes challenging for some people is you have to have the ability to try to visualize. Right? Historians do this all the time, but it's something that can help you. And so if you haven't done that yet, really try to imagine when you read these things, when you read about these stories of the ancient environments, try your hardest to picture it in your mind. And I did put some clips in with, with uh, assignment number two to help you with that. So go through those and enjoy them because it'll really kind of help take you back in time. Okay, with coal formation, the key points, the things that you want to make sure you take away are that we're talking about a period called the Carboniferous period and it stems all the way back to 360 million years ago and it lasted up until 299 million years ago. That's a span of 61 million years. That's a big chunk of time and that's very far back into the past. During this time period, Pangaea hadn't even existed yet. It was during this era, or I should say period, where the continents were starting to come together and they actually formed into Pangaea during the Carboniferous period. And try to imagine this in your mind. That meant that on the planet Earth, there was this giant landmass that every day when the Earth rotated under the sun, that was a, that was huge, amount, huge amounts of land that were just baking under the sun. And that, that meant a big portion of the Earth became very warm during the day and, and for long seasons at a time. That, combined with a few other factors, led to enormous plant growth. And there were huge stretches of earth over that giant landmass that were just covered in these, I'm going to say forests, but they're, they were very different from modern day forests. The best we could do is maybe think about a tropical rainforest nowadays, but even that's different. And if you go through the video clip that I give you where um, there's an animation done, showing you a carboniferous forest, you'll realize that the trees were even very different. But here's the thing. Here's what was very profoundly different about that period of time versus today. When those leaves from those, uh, or those, those fronds and those ferns dropped off those trees and when, when the trees themselves fell over into these shallow kind of murky environments, they were left there to only be worked on by bacteria that were only capable of doing anaerobic decay. Um, and this is not because it was a hypoxic environment. Oxygen was present, but believe it or not, evolution hadn't placed those types of bacteria on the planet yet. And the types of bacteria that I'm talking about are the types of bacteria that undergo aerobic decomposition or, or utilize aerobic decomposition. When the day comes that I pass away, my body's gonna slowly or, or more or less rapidly break down from bacteria that are using oxygen to break down the carbon-based molecules in my body to get the energy they need. If you were to take my body and put it in a hypoxic environment, the bacteria can't do that. So they undergo a different type of decomposition called anaerobic decomposition. At any rate, in the Carboniferous period, that's all that was, that's all the bacteria could do. And so that meant that this vegetation sat there for a long period of time and underwent a very slow rate of decay. And it led to the modern day coal that we have. Now, fast forward, you know, up until about 255 million years ago. This was an important part in Earth's history as well. Pangaea was about to start breaking up and, um, and this, is what we call the Mesozoic Era. Now, this is when dinosaurs had made their entrance on the world stage. They were roaming the continents, but, and this is, again, you're gonna to wanna to try to use your visualization here. Because you have this giant landmass that's starting to break apart, you can imagine, especially around the edges and those margins, there were parts of land that would temporarily be submerged underwater. A good example is Saudi Arabia, modern day Saudi Arabia. It wasn't a desert, it was once under a shallow sea. I can point to the ocean behind me or Long Island Sound behind me 
but it's not really a good way to get that feel. You gotta try to imagine in your mind stretches upon stretches and miles upon miles of very shallow ocean that was very warm and teeming with enormous amounts of phytoplankton and zooplankton. And that's important because it was those organisms that would eventually become our modern day petroleum reserves. That which lives must die. So all of this, all, all of those phytoplankton and zooplankton, well, they would pile up on the seafloor so rapidly that the bacteria couldn't really even do anything with it quickly enough. By the way, we did have bacteria at this point that could do aerobic decomposition, but it didn't matter. There was so much organic material falling to the seafloor that it piled up so quickly and it choked off a lot of it from oxygen in the water. So now any bacteria that was submerged down deeper could only utilize anaerobic decomposition. And that's what happened to all that material. And that became the modern day petroleum under places like Saudi Arabia. So now here, here you have a place on earth today that's a dry, hot desert. And yet they are drilling through that sand and they are pulling up this liquid stuff called petroleum. And that petroleum, ladies and gentlemen, was once the phytoplankton and the zooplankton from way back during the Mesozoic era. Thank you, I hope you enjoy assignment number two and we'll talk soon.